Brent says, let's just get rid of the moon. Good idea. Down with the moon. Get rid of it entirely. It's just in the way, causing light at night when I'm trying to sleep. Who needs tides anyway? All right, let's do this thing. On today's show, we're going to be looking at the super high resolution mode that is in the new Lumix G9. We'll talk about how it works, how it's made, and look at some of the results. It's kind of cool. Good morning, good afternoon, greetings, salutations, and all that good stuff. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here on YouTube at Photo Joseph. No, at YouTube.com slash Photo Joseph, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. It's live, hence when I have no idea what I'm saying, you get to experience that in its entirety. <laughs> greetings. Today, we're talking about high-res mode on the G9. You may have heard of this thing. It shoots an AD80 megapixel image, and you're thinking, how in the heck does it do that? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to explore and explain. Now... It's super techy how this works. And I read this really long, super techy article yesterday and my head kind of went, and I, I'm gonna explain it as kind of best as I can, but I'm also gonna link down below to an article that you should all go read if you really, really are interested in this stuff. But here's the basic gist of it. Okay, you ready for this? You've got a pixel, but a pixel, there's no such thing as a pixel. Pixel is a bunch of, that's hokey pokey. There's no such thing as a pixel. There are things called photosites. And a photosite is kind of like a grid. Think of it like a pixel, but it's not a pixel. Photosite is a grid that is on your sensor. On that sensor, you have a photosite that is either red, green, or blue, one of three colors. Sadly, three does not make a convenient grid of four. So you have a blue, a red, and two greens. So it's like green, red, and then blue, green. I think that would be the pattern, something like that. Anyway, so they're alternating blue, green, reds, but you have twice as many green photosites per pixel as you do red and blue. And apparently that's very convenient because apparently the human eye sees green better than red and blue. And so voila, it's good for us. Who knew? So when you take a picture, normally, normal picture, the camera, uh, the camera is basically from those photo sites is recording a color. And it's going to choose one of those colors that is going to make that pixel from but then it's going to use data from the surrounding photosites and the adjacent photosites and just determine from all that what color is actually used. See, I told you this is a crap explanation, but that's, it's like magic voodoo. It takes one of these four and then it takes the surrounding data and it goes, mm, it should be this color and it makes a color and that's what makes a pixel. Okay, that's a crap explanation, but that's basically what's happening. When you do the high resolution photography, what happens is that, that sensor shifts less than a pixel, basically half a pixel, so a photosite's width over and records the same data, the same area, using a different photosite. Get where we're going now? So it does this eight times. It's, it's like a little jiggity dance. It goes kind of over and up and down and diagonal like this and all these different directions. And it records eight signals for one pixel. And from that, because now it has more data than it needs, it can expand that to four pixels. Now that's where the explanation goes really hokey and I super don't get it. But it has to do with the four photosites per pixel and it expands eight pictures, combines it together. And what you end up with is something that is twice as wide and twice as tall. And I know I'm going to get just raged on in the comments that I totally explained that wrong, but that's my really layman's understanding of it. It doesn't really matter. The fact is it works. And it works really well. So I went out to shoot some stuff. I started, I just went out and shot some like landscapey things and did put the camera on a tripod, shot the pictures in regular and in high-res mode to compare. And they're higher resolution, but it's really hard to appreciate the difference. So then I came back into the studio and I shot a bunch of pictures in here, really close-up stuff where we could really see what's happening. And this is where it gets really cool. So then now we're getting somewhere. Now we're gonna see something really interesting. So I got a bunch of pictures to show you, comparison side by side. We're gonna open up raw photos in Photoshop, except one is a JPEG, because I forgot that it camera was such a JPEG, um, but it doesn't matter. And you're gonna see all the size comparison side by side. So for those watching live, as you usually know, of course, if you're watching live, you can comment in the chat room live. I can bring them up on screen here. So if you've never seen the show live before, do come in and check that out sometime. You get to participate in the chat. If you have a question, put it at photo Joseph like the folks here have done, and then I will be able to address it. And we're seeing the conversation about getting rid of the moon. It was a whole pre-show conversation about the, did you guys see the eclipse? Uh, if you got a cool picture of the eclipse, put it in the comments, you know, put a link, I'll approve it. That's all good. And we'll, uh, we'll show those off because that's kind of cool stuff. Okay, so we've got a bunch of pictures here to look at. Um, a couple things about, before we even get into the pictures, a couple things about shooting the high resolution mode. So as I kind of attempted to explain, it is shooting eight pictures. Very quickly, very rapid succession, but it is eight pictures. So what this means is you cannot be hand-holding. 
you have to have the camera on a tripod and your subject cannot be moving. So it works fine for landscapes where the any movie you'd have is like a tree kind of doing this kind of thing, way off, that's okay. But someone walking or posing, unless they're holding, I haven't tried doing a portrait of someone holding really still, that might work. But in general, you need static subjects and the camera has to be on a tripod. So this is not for every type of photography, but if that's the kind of thing you're shooting, landscapes or anything static in the studio, you want this high, super high resolution image, it totally works. Um, other limitations you have of this high, so, uh, high resolution mode. The ISO maxes out at 1600. I don't know why. I really don't know why, but it does. It maxes out at 1600, and the lens can only stop down to f8, which is quite fascinating, which kind of makes sense because you really want maximum coverage of the sensor without vignetting, and so it's, yeah, you can only shoot at f8. That's your maximum. You cannot only shoot, you can open up all the way, but you can maximum close down to f8, maximum ISO of 1600. So, and you have to be on a tripod. So some limitations, but if you can work around those limitations, then you're off to the races and you're gonna have some fun with this stuff. Okay, so there, there's the basics, there's the limitations. Now let's take a look at some images. As I said, I'm going to start with pictures of landscape stuff, which is not a huge, great example, but it's a starting with kind of a real world thing and then we'll get into the studio shots. So, switch over to my computer. Um, let's see here, I'm going to open these two pictures here. All right, so let's just open these guys. This is Photoshop, we're looking at camera raw and then now Photoshop, opening these guys up and just give that thing a moment to open. There we go. So now we've got the two. You can see right away, if we look up here at the top, that one zoomed out at 16%. This one is zoomed out at 8%. So the difference here, if I just hit Command, Option I, open the image size, you can see, let's set this to pixels, that we are looking at the high-res version here. It is 10,368 pixels wide by 776 pixels tall. This number is not made up. This is not a coincidence. Let's go over to the original one, the one that is standard, and open the info on that and set that to pixels as well. And you'll see that that is 5184 by 3888. So that other number is actually exactly double. So if I go in here and I say, set that to percent, type in 200%, 10368 by 770, 7776, you got that. So it is double the width, double the height, four times the resolution, four times the data. That's big. Now get that, that's what adds up to the 80 megapixels. Cause you started with 20, right? And it's four times, 20 times four is eight. Hey, 80, so there's your 80 megapixels, sweet. So there's there's where the 80 megapixels comes from. Um, excellent, so now let's cancel out of that. And I'm going to do this, I'm gonna go side by side here. Let's do an arrange two up vertical here. And I'm going to take this first image and hit command one, bring that to 100% and, oops, cancel, get the hand tool. And let's kind of go over to the trees over here or something. Come here, I know there's some trees up here on the hillside that'll be worth looking at, there we go. And we're going to do this one and hit command one on there and bring in the same trees, bring the same trees. If I can find the trees, where's the trees? Another here somewhere. There we go. So there you can see kind of a difference in the size. It is double, right? Double the height, double the width. Now the color differences here is because the original one is JPEG because I had the camera set to JPEG and I didn't realize that until I was back in the studio later. Oops. But the, 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 Stitch, not stitch, whatever we call it, the super high resolution one, that one's raw. All the other ones are raw, just don't worry about it. That's why there's a little color difference in here. Oh, but you can see right there, you can see the size difference. Okay, cool. So there's a size difference, but I, you know, I really, really want to see is kind of like pixel quality and so on. And that's kind of hard to tell from this because it's kind of a hazy day and you know, there's the tree, I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. So that's interesting, but let's close this. Let's just close this for a minute. Let's open something much more clear on what we're looking at. So for that, I think, let's just hit open on all these, find the right ones. Uh, here we go, we're gonna grab these guys. So I opened up, or I took a picture of a focusing chart. Very, very exciting stuff, focusing charts, let me tell you. Whew, man, exhilarating day in the studio this was. But I figured this would be a good way to see at a pixel level what we're seeing, what the difference is, right? And then I thought even better, we're gonna go to the ruler, we're gonna go to that next, because that's even kind of cooler, but we're gonna build up to it, right? Let's build up to it. All right, so let's go in here, and I'm gonna once again do the window workspace, uh, arrange to, let's just do a two up uh, vertical there, and command one on the left. So the left side one is my super high resolution one, so it sees at 8.3%, 8 so we're gonna zoom into that guy, and then do this, zoom in. So now we can see them side by side a little more clearly. Okay, so now we can start to see a little bit of difference in the images. Just forget about resolution for a minute. Let me actually zoom out of the one on the left, so they're now the same Side. Actually, no, there we go. So the one on the left is at 
can see up here, it says 50. I zoomed out twice there, 50%. Uh, and the one on the right is at 100%, right? 100%, that's the standard one. So you can see here they're the same size. The only, and this is something I saw consistently throughout, the only kind of image quality difference that I saw is the original, the non-high resolution ones, appear to be slightly higher contrast. Clearly something you can fix very easily or address very easily in post, just a little contrast adjustments and away you go. But I saw that pretty consistently. The standard one is a little bit higher contrast, but otherwise it's all about the pixels. So now we're looking at the two side by side. Okay, so let's go into here and let's bring this one up to 100%, the one on the left, that's our big one. And I'm gonna take the one on the right and let's bring it up to 200%. So now we can really start to see more clearly the difference in here. Look at this focus chart, you can see it's kind of funny the way it's printed. It's like this big blob, blob of ink in the middle and these little lines trailing off. But you can see the lines are quite clear on there, quite sharp. And over here, they're pixelized, obviously, because I'm zoomed into 200%. But you can really start to see some of the difference. So let's do this. Let's take, let's say that I needed a high resolution image, right? For print or for, I don't know, for whatever reason, I need it to be a high resolution. So I decide, I know what I'll do. I will upscale the image. And then I'll have the pixels, right? Fair, right? Let's take a look and see what happens when we do that and see how that compares to the original one, the original high resolution one. So we've got, we're going to take a standard and upscale it and then compare it to the high resolution shot in camera. So we'll see what the quality difference is. Basically, what we're trying to determine here is, is there value in shooting it that way? Or do you just shoot it normally and upscale it? Is the camera adding more precise, cleaner, more accurate data by doing its little pixel dance? then Photoshop would be just by scaling it? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Let's find out. So let's go over here and we're, let's, see, let's go take this back to 100% and then command option I that. And we're going to scale this 200%. And again, you see the dimensions have gone up to 10,368 pixels. Click OK. And I know there's re different resampling algorithms. We're just going to leave it on automatic. So maybe if you really know what you're doing, you get a slightly better result than this. But what we want to see, of course, is what it really looks like. This is just standard, straight up, what it looks like. Okay, here we go. We'll get that back over to the center point. And now you can see, and in fact, let me take these both up to 200% now. And now you can really start to see the difference in here. Look at how much softer the one on the right is. There is very much less detail in here than there is on the left. So we're looking at, on the left, the super high res mode, scaled up to 200%. On the right, we're looking at the standard mode, which has been image size scaled to 200% and then zoomed in to 200%. So we're kind of at 400 on here. And there's a significant difference in there. Okay, okay, so now we're getting somewhere, right? So now we're seeing that there really is a quality difference. Those pixels are not made up. This isn't like, oh, we're gonna take a picture on camera, scale it up to 200% and tell everybody that we're making high resolution pictures. No, no, this is actually looking pretty good. Okay, well, this is one little test. Let's go to another test, shall we? So let's go to another one. Close these guys, don't save that, don't save that. And open again, and hello, open. And I have to grab all of them because since my files are no longer named the way I want it, I don't know what they're called anymore. Here we go, grab this one and this one of the rulers, open those guys. And one of the reasons that I, sh I shot the ruler for two reasons. One, because it would be more clear looking at it, the size difference, because you can see the little hash marks, so that's cool. Also, it's a metal ruler, so it's got all kinds of cool texture to it, which we can really see in here as well. So kind of a double whammy on there. Remember, if you have questions throughout the show, if you're watching live, pop them into the pop them into the live chat over here. God, I keep forgetting which way to point. Uh, pop them in here, type that photo just in front of it. I'll try to address it. And of course, if you're watching later and you have questions, pop them into the comments. All right, back to this. All right, so let's this time do an arrange with two horizontal windows, because that makes sense. And Get back to my hand tool here. Rulers are turned off. Okay, so right now they look identical. Right? The camera's on a tripod, did not move between shots. Very, very careful about that. Uh, just touch the camera to change it from standard to high resolution mode. And um, Broderick Interna has a very good question, and we are actually going to come to that. He says, what about downscaling the high res one to match the normal one? Getting ahead of me, but we're getting there. Okay, so let's back into this. So, uh, top one, 8.3%, bottom 16%. So the top one is, and by the way, you're just, for a point of reference, you are looking at this video, if you're watching it in full resolution, is 1920 by 1080. My Mac screen is at 1920 by 1080. So you're seeing at 100%, 1920 pixels wide. So if you're playing with this on your Retina um, iMac or MacBook Pro, then MacBook Pro, then it's not gonna be quite as big looking because 
you've got a lot more than 1920 pixels, but for this broadcast, that's what we get, 1920 wide, okay. All right, just pointing out some facts there. All right, so let me zoom in and hit Command-1 on the top and Command-1 on the bottom, and let's go to the number, because I think the number is kind of a, a cool way to really see the difference in size there. So there, huge, huge difference in size. Double the size. Let's go to the little lines on here, little lines on there, little hash marks, and you can now you really can see the size difference on these. There we go. That's pretty cool, right? So that's a huge, huge difference. And look at the texture inside of the um, inside of the metal here, inside the metal itself. We zoom into a, you know, another 200% on these, and it's just it's so cool. This texture that's in there, you can really clearly see the advantage, right? That is that's massive. There is really a significant quality enhancement here, and I'm mean, just looking at just looking at the top one here. There's an immense amount of detail showing up in there. That's 80 freaking megapixels worth of detail in there. Now that's pretty cool, right? Okay, we're onto something here. Like this is really working out well. This is really nice. Now we already did the scaling. We don't need to do the scaling again, except we do want to scale down, and there's a really good reason for this. So, our front product interna, we got the uh, got the idea ahead of time here. We're going to scale down and see what happens to our image quality, specifically for noise. Ooh. Okay, there's another question about Christian Ritchie says, have you taken any images of objects that are not completely stationary just to see what effects this has in camera? Yeah, it's not pretty. You end up with all kinds of ghosting. The very first time I did it, I completely forgot the, okay, I was being really stupid. Um, I The camera was stationary, but it was a windy day and the trees were doing this. Yeah, that was not pretty. I'm like, oh, right, everything has to be stationary. I knew that. Yeah, everything has to be stationary. Uh, a very little bit of movement, it's, it'll probably be okay. Um, but even there, you know, you want it as stationary as possible. So that's the way it is. And Burn6 says, imagine a 132nd machinist ruler or even a 164 inth. Mind blown. Pfft. Cool. We like blown minds here. Okay, so now let's go the other direction. Now let's take it and scale down. And why would we scale down? Noise. So we all know that if you shoot a high ISO image and it's got a lot of noise in, like really high, so you got a lot of noise in there, one way to reduce that noise or get rid of some of that noise is to scale down, right? And think about the GH5S camera, the new Panasonic Lumix GH5S that is a low noise beast. It is designed for low light, or one of many things, for low light cinematography and photography, but it's only 10 megapixels, lower resolution. Okay, well, that allows you bigger photo sensors, bigger photo sites to capture that data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But here, if we can take an image that is 80 megapixels and scale it back down to 20, so take it down 50%, half the width, half the height, getting it back to where we, where we started, would we actually get a better result? And that is the question that we want to answer. So I said that, unfortunately, the maximum, and again, I don't know why, but the maximum is 1600 ISO. And this is the same on Olympus, who has a very similar feature. Um, same limitations, 1600, F8, that's the way it is. Um, so I set the camera to 1600, dim the lights in the studio, set up a shot that would be specifically, you know, properly exposed, obviously, at 1600, with a very dark, soft background where you'd get lots of noise. And so I shot that at the standard resolution and at the high resolution. So let's take a look at those next. So let me close out of these guys, and let me just bring that up there. Let's see your high ISO test. Those are the ones. We'll bring that up, and we're going to see what these look like. So here you can see what the image is. It's obviously very exciting, very dramatic. I'm going to win awards for this shot. I just know it. And let's open this guy up and wait for the second one to open. And that background there, it's a black background with just a little bit of light shining on it. And uh, again, shot at 1600 ISO. So let's go for, I think we're going to go for, let's go for the two vertical, let's do a two horizontal layout. Let's do it like this and take that top one and set that to 100%, and the top one is, there we go, bring that, and the bottom one is our original size, normal size, bring that up, where are we, here we go. Okay, so now, actually, you know, we're gonna do this side by side the other way, I think that does work better on this. Let's go for a vertical layout on here. There we go, there we go. So look at the shadows behind, the gray area, the dark area behind. The noise is, I would say very, very similar, very similar. Let's go in, let's zoom in one more. Let's go to 200% and 200%. The, let's see here, are we still, yeah, we're 200 on both. 
So there's higher contrast on the right. That's the original image, and that's something that I said we are we are definitely seeing a little bit higher contrast, but nothing we can't adjust. So I could even bring up the levels and um, and maybe make a little bit higher contrast in there. But I don't I don't want to mess with it. But I could. You can see I can do that really easily. But I don't want to mess with it. But our noise is very very similar right now. So that means if I scale this down 50%, I'm only using one out of every four pixels, we could end up with something with a lot less noise to it. So let's do it. So Command Option I, 50% zoom, scale automatic, there we go, and zoom back in. All right, there we go. Now look at the noise side by side. Look at how much smoother the one on the left is. The one on the left is the one that started as a 80 megapixel image and has been scaled down. Let's zoom that in to 200%. Um, zoom that into 200%, zoom that one into 200%, and now you can really start to see it in there. Look at how much nicer and cleaner that is. Look at the noise in the metal on here. You see the metal texture looks much smoother and cleaner, but we haven't lost any of the sharpness. We haven't lost the sharpness. We've actually, I guess you could even argue we've gained some sharpness, but we have definitely gotten rid of some of that noise, quite a bit of that noise, I would say. So that I think is fantastic. So if your thing is low light photography and you're shooting, I know this is a lot of caveats, but and you're shooting static subjects, that's pretty good, right? That is a really great way. So now what I'm thinking is once I've got my hands on a GH5S, which is designed for low light photography and has a native ISO of 1600, is that right, 16? I think that's right. What if I shoot at that and scale it up to match the G9 and we'll see where, where we really are. So what is the best low light solution? Is it to shoot on the G9 in the high resolution mode to scale it down? Is it to shoot on a GH5S and scale it up? This is gonna be really interesting. I can't wait to try that. I don't have the GH5S yet, but once I do, I will absolutely come back and redo that test because I think this is a super interesting thing to know. If you're shooting low light and you're shooting static subjects, then this might be a fantastic solution for getting the best image quality. So that is what I wanted to show you guys today. That is today's show. See what's going on in the comments here, and then we're gonna do a little, uh, we'll, we'll address a couple things. Let's just, um, actually real quick before I do that. Um, before we hit the comments and the questions, I do want to tell you about Friday's show, because Friday show, let me get this uh, card up here again. Friday show is gonna be a lot of fun because it's going to be a interview style show where I'm gonna bring in my friend, Don Komarechka, who is going to tell us all about his insane snowflake photography. He does this stuff where he goes in and, uh, and shoots a series of photos, focus stacked, that, that he then focus stacks with a super macro lens, capturing snowflakes at extremely close up, as you saw from that title card, it's incredible. He has a whole book out about it. So we're going to talk about that. He's going to come on. He's from Canada. We're going to do a little Skype interview type thing, show you some of his pictures. He's going to talk about the technique and all that good stuff. So that's going to be super fun. So be sure to tune in for that. That is on Friday. And um, yeah, that's it. That's enough of that stuff. So let's see what's going on over in the comments here. Uh, Burns Tech, we already hit that. Uh, Willem Hultman says, what about a G9 video guide or photo guide? Are you talking about uh, a class, Willem? Is that what you mean? If that's what you mean, I have the GH5 training. I don't intend to do a G9 training. There's a lot of similarities between the GH5 and the G9, but of course there's a lot of unique stuff in the G9. I don't intend to. A few people have asked, not a whole lot. I don't think I will, but if I get enough people asking about it, maybe I will. We'll see. Uh, Project says, this feature would be cool for photographic paintings. Oh, interesting. There you go. Uh, Daddy MCC asking if I got any shots of the supermoon. So my shots of the supermoon were while it was eclipsed and through a lot of clouds. So now look at my Instagram, instagram.com slash photo Joseph. Check that out. You can see them there. They're kind of cool. They're kind of cool. Um, or achieving old photos. I, mean, I think maybe you mean archiving, Brittany. Uh, archiving, if you're archiving stuff, you want a super high resolution image of a print that you already have, you want to archive that. That'd be great too. Yeah, you absolutely could do that. Okay. Hey guys, I think that's it. Um, I probably should tell you to follow the new Instagram account. We're, it's a, we're still kind of setting it up. Remember I told you it's an experiment. We bought an account with a whole bunch of followers on it. It's really interesting to see because the content that we're pushing to it is clearly very different than the content that the, or the originator of the account was pushing to it. It's kind of a fun experiment, um, but it's not getting seen by a lot of people yet, but I think it also just needs to build up. So it's got 35,000 followers. That's how we bought it. We haven't bled any off. Um, we've actually grown a little bit, which is crazy weird. But the new content is obviously about this show. So do check that out. It's um, it's Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. So Instagram.com slash Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. Just search for that and you'll find it there. Subscribe to that if you haven't already. And, uh, you know, be sure to do the little likey thing on those. It's, we're just, it's an experiment. We'll see what we can do with this Instagram account. It's kind of fun. And that, my friends, 
is all there is to it. Take care of yourselves, everybody. We will see you back here on Friday for the interview with Don. And, um, and that's about it. Have a great rest of the week, folks. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.